Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ. Bless. I'm Officer Baruch, IUIC Tampa. To my right. Officer Benel. All right. So today we're going to go over a who's who in the Bible. All right. If you haven't seen any of the series, I suggest you go check them out. If not, that's fine too. But uh, what we're going to be going over is our forefathers and our foremothers in the scriptures, who they are, some type of things that they've done, and how we can apply them into our life today. All right. I like to break it up into classes or categories. So um, usually I'll break it up in, by their not notoriety, their power, their lineage. So there's four different classes in which I break them down. Class C is commonly not so common. Class B is brave actions worth noting. Class A is the advanced, okay, like your Judas Maccabee is, warriors, those known for wisdom and faith. And uh, we have class S, which is your Supremes. So we have Christ, we have Adam, we have David, Paul, etc. But today we're going to go over Jehu. All right, we're going to go over Jehu. Jehu is a class, I would say he is a class A. He is a class A because he was a mighty warrior. So it's called, who's who, Jehu, consider thyself. Let's read Romans chapter 15 and 4 to start it out. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right. So through patience and comfort of these scriptures, we're supposed to have hope. And it's supposed to teach us some things as we read and as we study. So as we go through uh, this who's who on Jehu, we're going to see what things we can apply to our life, how he uh, did amazing things, but also how he... Did some not so amazing things as well. All right. So let's get into it. Let's start in 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to read verse 1. We got a little history going on here. So uh, let's pay attention. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 1 through 2. And then we're going to go to 15 through 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 2. Verse 1. Verse 1. And... Uh, and I have told Je Jezebel all the all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Right. So Ahab told Jezebel uh, all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. So the Lord rose rose up mighty men to destroy the uh, false prophets and the demons. That were in Israel under the house of Ahab. Read. Verse 2. Then Je Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elishiah, Elijah. Uh, Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So Jezebel, the wretched devil she is, she says, uh, may God do the same to me also if I don't kill you by this time tomorrow, Elijah. So she's coming after one of the mighty prophets of the Most High God. Let's go to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Go and return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou cometh, I know it, Hazael, Hazael to be king over Syria. Right, because Elijah had got nervous. He wanted to flee and hide from Jezebel. But the Lord says, you go back and do these certain things. Read. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Right, so anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, or Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Read. And Elisha, the son of Shaph Shaphal, of Abba, 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 Abel Mehola, Abel Mehola, mm -hmm. that thou appointed, anointed to be prophet in thy room. Right, in thy room. This is the Elisha that we all know about, read. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel, Hazel shall, shall Jehu slay. So as they're killing these false prophets, he says, if they get away from Hazael, Jehu is going to catch him. And if they get away from Jehu, read. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall 
Alicia? Alicia Slate. And if they get away from Jehu, Alicia will surely get them. Verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 Israels. In Israel? Israel. And all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which had not kissed him. Mm -hmm. So he departed there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him. And he with the 12, and Elisha, Elijah passed by him and cast him Man and cast his mantle upon him. And he cast his mantle upon him. So he's anointing these men as they go. Uh, Haziel is the king over Syria. Uh, Jehu is the king over Israel. And Elisha is the prophet in the stead or in the room of uh, Elijah. All right. So he gave him his mantle. Now, let's continue. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 18. What we're reading about is Jehu. Jehu was anointed to uh, be a judge in, in, a, in a way in Israel to what? Slay the house of Ahab, okay? These false prophets to bring judgment upon the wickedness of Israel. Read. 2 Kings, Kings chapter yeah. 10, verse 18. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. 2 Kings chapter 9 and verse 1. We're going to read to verse 37. 2 Kings chapter 9 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take, and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Gilead. And when thou cometh hither, look out there and Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshah. Now, remember, he got the mantle from Elijah. He passes it down, and now Elisha, uh, Elisha is doing what uh, the Lord told Elijah to be done. Read. And go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Mm -hmm. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord. I have anointed thee king over Israel. Mm -hmm. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So he says, listen, go in there, anoint uh, uh, Jehu to be king over Israel and run. Don't wait. Read. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Raphma Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captain of the host were sitting. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have an errand to thee. And captain, and O captain, mm -hmm. and Jehu said unto him, unto which of all us, and he said, thee, O captain. So he was sitting among captains, among great men, and he said, uh, I have a, a, a job to do, uh, O captain. And you know how, like, you you in a circle uh, of officers and somebody be like, hey, officer, and all the officers look. Right. So he's like, which one? Wh who are you talking to? And he says, it's you, Jehu. I have business with you. Read. And he rose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said unto him, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. Indeed over Israel, read. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, the, the master. Uh -huh. That I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets. Because Ahab and Jezebel were killing the prophets, the Lord said, look, you're going to be king over Israel, you mighty warrior, and you, I chose you to avenge my name, my prophets, and my people. Read. And the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hands of Jezebel. Come on. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish. Uh -huh. And I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, mm -hmm. and him that is shut up and left in Israel. Come on. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jer Jeroboam. Jeroboam, uh-huh. The son of Nebat. Mm -hmm. and, and like the house of Basha, the son of a a Ahijah. Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Je now, Jezreel. Now, I want you to remember this. It says, I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam. And the uh, verse 10, and the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel. Their judgments is death. So remember this. Put it into your spiritual pocket. Read. And there shall be done to bury her, her uh -huh. 
and he opened the door and fled. Come on. Then Jesh, Jesh, Jehu? Jehu came forth to the servant of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this maid fellow to thee? Right, so Jehu comes out the room, and you can just imagine his face. Like, imagine, Matt. like, what he's... <sighs> Jehu, you all right? Yeah. Um... What 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 was that what what was that about? What did why did he take you in the room? Why you still got oil dripping from your head, man? What happened, man? Don't uh, mm. go ahead. <laughs> uh, and and he said unto them, "Ye know the man and his communication." And they said, "It is false. Tell us now." Man, you know that man his communication. You you know it's false. Just tell us what he said. Read. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus said the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. He told me that the Lord said that I'm, I'm king over Israel. Read. Then they haste and looked every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs uh -huh. and blew with, trump, with the trumpet, saying, Jeshu, Jehu, Jehu his king. Do -do. So they blow on the trumpet. They say, hey, hey, they get up. They blow the trumpet and say, Jehu is king over Israel. Read. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, conspired conspire against Joram. Now, Joram had kept Ramah Gil Gilad and all, his I and all Israel because of Hazrael, king of Syria. Right. So he kept uh, all Israel because of Hazael, king of Syria. Come on. But king... Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians, which the Syrians have given him. Mm -hmm. When he fought with Hazael, Hazael king of Syria, mm -hmm. and Jehu said, "It is, if it be your mind, then let none of none go forth, for nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Jezreel." Come on. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel for, jo for jo Joram laid there. So jo Joram was there in Syria, and uh, Jehu went to go meet him. Read. And Ahaziah, Azah king of Judah, Ahaziah? Azah Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. Uh -huh. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, mm -hmm. and he spied the company of Jehu, as he came mm -hmm. and said, I see a company, and Joram said, Take an horseman and send and send to meet them, and let him say it is peace. So you have a watchman on the tower, and he says, Hey, somebody's riding fast. Like I see the dust coming off of the horse's feet, hind feet. Uh I don't know who it is. Hey, go jo jo um Joram says, you know what? Send a messenger out there and see if it's peaceable. Read. So so there went one of the horsebacks to meet him and said, Thus said the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? What do you know about peace? Get get on, man. This has nothing to do with you, read. Turn thee behind me. Uh huh. And and the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. So the messenger came, but he didn't return, read. Then he sent out a second on horseback. Uh huh. Which came to them and said, Thus said the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? He said the same thing again. We're reading about Jehu. What we're going to look at is the accolades or the attributes of who Jehu is, how the Lord used him to do amazing things in Israel, and actually how it turned out for Jehu. Mm. Read. Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he driveth furiously. furiously. So he's driving furiously. You know how you got that one crazy driver in your camp? Everybody got that one crazy driver with that left foot or something like that, right? They knew exactly Jehu's uh, driving style. They knew that he drove furiously. Mm. And they knew exactly who that was on horseback. Read. 
And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, Ahaziah, and king, Ahaziah. Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, and each in his chariot. And they went out again, and Jehu. Uh, out against Jehu. Out against Jehu. Uh -huh. And met him in the portion of Naboth, Naboth mm -hmm. and Jezre the Jezreelites. Come on. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, It is peace. Is it peace? Is it peace, Jehu? Uh huh. And he answered, With peace, so long as the whoredom of thy mother Jeze Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. What? He says, So, so, uh, he says, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jeze Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. He says, how's it going to be peace? Your mother's a whore and mm. a witch <laughs> in <Wow>. Israel. <laughs> How are we going to have peace? Jehu wasn't no joke. He called this man mama a whore and a witch. <laughs> wow. He said, it can't be no peace. You know what she's done in Israel. And y'all covered it up. Y'all didn't try to, y'all didn't destroy her. Y'all followed her actions, and you followed the house of Ahab. What peace? Read. And Joram turned his hand and fled and said to Azahiah, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, there is treachery treachery on Azahiah. All right. So he turns his hand and says, ah, oh, he turns and he's running. There's treachery. Oh, Ahaziah, there's treachery. Read. And Jehu drew a bow. So as he's running, he turns his hand. He turns his hand, his body, he's running. And Jehu did what? And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength. So he grabs the bow. Uh, puts it into it, and he bends it. He grabs an uh, arrow, puts it into his bow, and he bends it. I mean, so much so you can hear mm. the stretch. The, and he's arcing it up. He's arcing it up. Read. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smoked. Whole round between his arms, and, and and the arrow went out at the at his heart. Right, and he it, you see that? So he was on. It says uh, between it smote Je Jeraham, Jehoram. Sorry, Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went between his heart. So he's on horseback. The man turns. He's stretching it, and he lets it go, and it hits him dead in his chest. Mm. Boom. Right between his arms. And what happened? And he sunk down in his chariot. And he sunk down in his chariot. He turns his hand because of the bits uh, on, the, on the chariot, the horses, and he's taking off. This brother has so good aim, such good aim, that he times it. Yeah, he's stretching, he's stretching, he lets it go. Mm. You just hear it whispering through the air. And it hits him right dead in his heart. Read. Verse 25. Then said Jehu to Vidkar, Vidkar mm -hmm. his captain, take up and cast him in the portions of the field of Naboth and, Jez and the Jezreelites mm -hmm. for remembering how that when I, when I and thou rode together after Ahab, his father, and the Lord laid this burden upon him. Come on. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son with the Lord. Okay, let's go down to verse 27. Verse 27, and when Ahaz, Ahaziah, when Ahaziah mm -hmm. the king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the way off of the garden house. Mm -hmm. And Jehu followed after him and said, smite him also in the chariot. Mm -hmm. And they did so at the going up to Gul, mm -hmm. which is by the Abilang, and, the, and he fled to Meg. Meg Meg Megiddo. Megiddo and died there. Right. So not only was, um, what's that brother's name? Johoram put to death, but Ahaziah was put to death too. Okay. So we look at this. We know that Jehu was risen up to pronounce judgment or to pronounce, uh, uh, yes, judgment as a king over Israel. Okay. To kill the house of Ahab in the whore uh, and, and which uh, Jezebel, okay, and her actions. We're going to read a little bit more about Jehu. Go to verse 30. Verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Je Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. So he came into Jezreel. He just did these mighty actions, these valiant works. And Jezebel, she thought she was bad. Mm. She, she spoke up against uh, 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 Elijah. And they've killed thousands of prophets. 
So you got Jehu that comes in and he's looking for Jezebel. Read. And she painted her face. She painted her face like a lot of these sisters be trying to make up, fake up. She thought that her looks was going to get her by, get her some type of uh, persuasion amongst the men. You know, she thought she was going to put the makeup on and try to look good for them or something like that. The men of the Lord don't, don't, are not persuaded for things like that. Read. And tied her head and looked out at, a, out at the window. Uh-huh. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, had Zim, Zimrod peace? Zimri peace? Who slew his master? Mm -hmm. And he lifted up his face to the window and said, who is on my side? So he looks up as she's looking down with her, with her three-layer makeup on and her uh, long eyelashes and her, her head wrap on. All right. And he's look, he, she's looking down. He's looking up. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, who's up there? Anybody up there on the side of the Lord? Read. And who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Now, you got two or three eunuchs who looked down at him, meaning what? These eunuchs wasn't going to be persuaded by her looks. Why? Because they can't do nothing anyway. Hmm. They're eunuchs. They ain't phased by uh, the looks of this woman, of a woman at all. You understand? Because they can't do nothing with her. They say, you know what? We with you, man. Read. And he said, throw her down. Throw her down. Throw her ass down. Read. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. She hit the ground so hard mm. that her blood sprinkled on the walls. Yeah. Boom. Blood everywhere. Read. And on the horses. Uh -huh. and, he, and he trotted her underfoot. So you got to imagine this. She hit the ground so hard that she turned to juice. <laughs> <laughs> that her blood hit the wall and it scared the horses that all he did, he just started stamping, stamping all over the place, um, stumping her into the ground till she burst in pieces. Read. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink mm -hmm. and said, go, see now this cursed woman and bury her. He went in and he said, hey, you see, go see this woman. Go ahead and bury her. It's, uh, it's our custom not to leave dead bodies in the street. So go ahead and bury this woman. Mm. Read. For she is a king's daughter. Uh-huh. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. That she burst to pieces. Mm. You understand? She hit the ground so hard. She was a king's daughter. She was an African. So Ahab married an African. You understand that? So uh, of the Zid Zidonians, okay? So in that regard, she was all over the place. Read. Wherefore, they came She couldn't get again. her mind right. <laughs> she couldn't get her mind right, huh? <laughs> she, lost her, she lost her mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Go ahead. Verse 36. Wherefore, they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he had spake by his servants, Elijah, the the, 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 the Tishbite. Remember the tish I told y'all to put a certain precept into your spiritual pocket where the Lord spoke something and it happened? This is what uh, um, what Jehu had to remember, that this was already spoken of the Lord. Read. Saying, in the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Right. She hit the ground. She got stumped out. And the dogs of Israel came and ate and nothing was left but uh, her skull and some stumps. That's about it. Read. And the carcasses, carcasses of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the fields in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say this is Jezebel. You see, they, couldn't, they couldn't identify her because she had no identifying markers upon her. That makeup was stumped off. You understand? She, mm. she, she couldn't, you couldn't tell. You understand? What we're looking at is mighty works of Jehu. Jehu was risen up by the Lord. He had encounters with Elijah. He had encounters with Elisha. Great, mighty prophets of God called to do a mighty work.
killed, uh, he went after and killed the house of Ahab and his brothers, mm -hmm. and he just threw the whore uh, Jezebel down till she burst to juice. Now we're going to see other works that, um, that Jehu also did. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 10. This one is a relatively short, but we're going to get into it. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 10 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Jehu, Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served a ball a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. All right, give me one second. So, um, I'm sorry, go to chapter 10 and start at verse 10 real quick. 2 Kings chapter 10 and verse 10. Know, know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For the Lord has done that which is spake by his servant Elijah. Read. So Jehu slew all the rem that, the remained, remained. Mm -hmm. that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel. Come on. And all his great men mm -hmm. and his kinfolks and his priests until he left him none remaining. None remaining. All right, now let's go to um, verse, verse 17. Verse 17. Come on. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remaineth unto Ahab in Samaria, mm -hmm. till he had destroyed him, according to the sayings of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. You see that? So Jehu had a mighty warrior spirit. He was a phenomenal warrior of God and king of Israel, uh, uh, slaying and destroying the wickedness of Israel. Y'all may not have known Jezebel was, was put to death by a mighty king of, uh, of, of Israel. Read. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served a ball a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now, you read about Jehu, all these great things he did. He says... Uh, Ahab served Baal a little compared to what I'm about to do. I'm about to turn this thing up. Baal, you ain't never seen an idol worshiper uh, greater than me, and I'm going to show you. But watch this, read. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal and all his servants and all his priests. Let none be waiting. Let none be wanting. wanting. Don't leave none of them out, read. For I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. I have a great sacrifice to do ba to Baal. So these men who worship Baal, they might have been thinking, you know what? He 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 just want to to be king of of uh idolatry or something like that. Mm. They didn't know what was going on, and this is how you show it. Read. Whosoever shall be waiting, he shall not live. Mm -hmm. But Jehu did it in the subtle to the intent that he might destroy the Worshippers of Baal. Right. So, Baal. but Jehu did it subtly to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. So he says, look, all y'all worshipers, y'all thought, y'all, uh, I, I needed to get Ahab out the way because I'm a true worshiper of Baal. I needed to get him out the way so y'all could have a real king idol, uh, idolater ahead of y'all to show y'all how it's really done. And they're like, oh, wow. Okay. We'll follow you. Read. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal, and they proclaimed it. Mm -hmm. And Jehu sent through all the through all Israel and all the worshipers of Baal came. So they had a big feast, right? Everybody was coming into the house uh, uh, to serve Baal. He said, don't leave nobody, none of those worshipers, don't leave them out. Bring them all in. Read. So that there was not a man left that came not. Uh -huh. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. It was packed. Standing room only. They was like, bro, I scoot over a little bit. I can't, bro. I can't. We all in here together. It was hot. People's toes getting stepped on. I mean, you got to imagine all these devil worshipers in one place. Read. And he said unto him, that was over the vestry. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, over the clothing of the house of Baal. Read. Bring forth the vestment for all the worshipers of Baal. Bring forth this uh, this clothing 
these vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. Now, I want y'all to pull up uh, what a vestment is. I'm going to show y'all something. Watch this. I'm going to show y'all how there's no new thing under the sun as according to the scriptures. Go ahead, pull it up. He says, him that was over the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshipers of, ba of Baal. You see this? These are your common day vestments. All you got to do is Google vestments, and this is what comes up. This is your Christian church. This is your Catholic church. This is your uh, Protestant church. This is your Episcopal church, your Baptist church. You understand that? Your method. This is all those churches. Guess what? They all worship Baal. You think those are your bishops. You think those are your priests. You think those are your uh, uh, popes. Mm. They all worship Baal. That's what it's going into. All right? They bring them all in, and he gives them all the same. He dresses them all likewise the same. All right? So let's continue. Verse 22. Verse 22. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, bring forth the vestment for all the worshipers of Baal. So all your Christian churches who wear that, yes, they wear. No, no. Not just if they don't wear it, but they all uh, uh, worship Baal. Read. And he brought them forth vestments. Come on. And Jehu went, and Je Jehonadab, the son of Rechab. Jehonadab? Jehonadab, the son of Re Rechab, Rechab, unto the house of Baal, and said unto the worshipers of Baal. Watch this. So Jehu went and said this to the worshipers of Baal. Read. Search and look at there, and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord but the worshipers of Baal only. So let me read it. And Jehu went, and Je uh, Je Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house um, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshipers of Baal, Search and look that there be with you, here with you, none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshipers of Baal only. I want y'all to also put this into your spiritual pocket. Because... I'm going to tell you now that what Jehu says actually comes back to bite him. He says, search and look that there be none here with you, none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshipers of Baal only. Mm. Only the worshipers of Baal are in here. He thought he was being facetious because, remember, he tried to do it subtly, but he didn't know that he was actually telling the truth. All right. Mm. Read verse 24. Verse 24, and when they went in, in to offer sacrifice and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without mm -hmm. and said, If any of the men whom I have brought unto our hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. Right, so if anybody let any of these men go that uh, out, of, out of this house, you're going to be put to death for them, all right? Read. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guards and to the captains, Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. And the guards and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burnt them. Right. Mm -hmm. And they break down the images of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a drop house into unto this day. Uh-huh. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. So Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. He killed the men in there and he killed those that were he set a fourscore men outside of the house of Baal uh, so that anybody that was escaping would be put to death. He was clearing out the house of Ahab, the wickedness of Ahab and Jezebel, the worshipers of Baal. That's how great and mighty Jehu was. Read. How be it from the sins of jo Jeroboam. Where are we at? Verse 29. 29, come on. How be it from the sins of. Read verse 28 one more time. Verse 28. Thus, thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Out of Israel, read. How be it from the sins of Jorobam. Jor 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 the son of Nabath, who made Israel. Jeroboam, how be it from the sins of Jeroboam? Jeroboam, the son of Nabath, 
who made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. Jehu departed not from after them. Ah, hold on. Read that one more time. How big? Read verse 28. Verse 28. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal, Baal out of Israel. Jehu destroyed idolatry and idol worshipers out of Baal. Read. How, out, of, out of Israel. Excuse me, read. How be it from the sins of Jeroboam. The, However, the sins of Jeroboam, read. The son of Nebath, who made Israel to sin. Jehu departed not from after them. So Jehu didn't depart from after the sins of Jeroboam. That what? Caused Israel to sin in idolatry. So you mean to tell me that the king of Israel, Jehu, mm -hmm. killed Ahab. He killed the house of Ahab. He killed the house of uh, uh, Jezebel. He did all these works. He killed Je uh, Jehoram. He killed Ahaziah. Mighty works. He killed all these uh, uh, Baal worshipers, the priests and all of that stuff. But then he still went after the ways of Jeroboam, mm. which is idolatry. Hmm. Read. To with the golden calves that were in Bethla and that were in Dan. Come on. And the Lord said unto Jehu, because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in my eyes. Right in the Lord's eyes because he rose them up. Elijah and Elisha were, were, were uh, tasked to rise, raise up Jehu, a king in Israel. Read. And has done unto the house of Ahab. According to all that was in my heart, uh -huh. thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. So because you did great things, Jehu, four generations of your children will sit on the throne of Israel. Read. But Jehu took no heed to the walk in the laws of the Lord. But Jehu did what? Took no heed to walk in the laws of the Lord. But Jehu did not want to continue. And following the laws of the Most High God. He says, ah, I did what I had to do. He retired from being a, a, a prophet. He retired from righteousness. It says, Israel waxed fat and kicked against God. Mm. Read. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the laws of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. Uh -huh. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, uh -huh. which made Israel to sin. Come on. In those days, the Lord began to cut Israel short. He began to cut off Israel and make Israel short, scattered them. Read. And Hazrael smote them in all the coasts of Israel. And Hazael, who was the king over Syria, he started to smote and kill them in Israel. Read. From Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead and the Gadonites and the Reubenites and the Manathites. All right, stop. Uh, read, go to verse 35. Verse 35. And Jehu slept with his father. So he died, read. And they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoraz, his son, reigned in his stead. Read verse 36. And the times of Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was 20 and, 20, was 20 and 8 years. So he reigned 28 years. But listen. Jehu was risen up to pronounce judgment to on, on Ahab to do this work in Israel. But after all of that he was he did, he killed all these idolaters. He did mighty works for the Lord. Guess what he did? The same thing that he killed them for. He ended up doing himself. And that's why I said uh, 2 Kings 10 and verse 23, and Jehu went. And Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal and said unto the worshipers of Baal, search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshipers of Baal only. Jehu said that and he did not even consider that he was talking about himself. So a lot of times and we're going to bring it back. Go to Galatians 6 and 1. A lot of times what happens in this truth is that brothers and sisters will come into this truth and will preach, will teach. Hell, it happened to me. Will preach, will teach, will say, that, will, will say thus saith the Lord. And sometimes we don't consider ourselves and continue to consider ourselves. Mm. 
We don't continue to examine ourselves. We don't continue to fix our spirit. And guess what? We will fall into sin. Read. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Come on. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, mm -hmm. ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the in the spirit of meekness. In the spirit of the Lord, you got to restore him. If somebody falls, you got to restore that brother after a time. You got to restore that sister after a time. After they've gotten their spirit together and they're doing what they're supposed to do, you have to restore them and be there for them. Read. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You see that? Considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. You're going to have a spirit of Jehu when you go to restore these people? You, when you pronounce judgment, you have to consider yourself also because we, too, as leaders, as followers of Christ, hearing this truth, we can all, on any day, be tested uh, and be, go through that trial and fall short in sin. That's why we have to continue to consider ourselves also, whether you're doing the correction, whether you're doing uh, uh, um, your, 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 um, correcting somebody, correcting yourself, Correcting anything, you have to also consider yourself. Did we finish that? Yes, sir. All right. You went to verse 4? Uh, no, we had you verse 2. All right, read. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so feel the law of Christ. Come on. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, mm -hmm. he deceiveth himself. When you think you're something and you're nothing, you deceive yourself. Read. But let every man prove his own works. We have to prove our own works in this truth. We have to continue to fight against ourselves. We have to continue to fight the sin nature within us, or we will be like Jehu. We will not consider ourselves, and we will fall. Read. But let every man prove his own works, uh -huh. and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone All right. and not in another. In another. All right, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. We're almost done. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. Examine yourselves whether... Whether ye be in the faith, uh -huh. prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, mm -hmm. how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be rep reprobate. So we have to examine ourselves because we're going to go through times. We're going to go through hard times, but that's not the time to give up. You understand? We're going to be tried. We're going to, the envelope is going to be pressed, especially in these last days. You see what, every, what, what these nations is doing against us. We can't give up in those times. Three more scriptures. Let's go to Sirach 35 and verse 20. Sirach chapter 35 and verse 20. All right. What type of person will you be when you when you didn't went to camp, when you didn't uh, 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 raised up uh, 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 much judgment in Israel? You've done great things. Are you going to kick back? Or are you going to continue? Read. Sirach chapter 35 and verse 20. Come on. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction uh -huh. as clouds of rain in the time of drought. So mercy, these are the trials. These are the things that we go through. The Lord will, mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction, meaning that when you're going through it, he's not always going to make it easy for us. You understand? That's not the time to give up. That's not the time to go into sin. That's not the time to, you know, uh, uh, say I've done enough in this truth. Mercy is seasonable in the time of what? Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. Uh -huh. As clouds of rain in the time of drought. As clouds of rain in the, in the time of drought. There will be rain in the dry days. There will be mercy in our days of affliction. But we can't give up in this fight. All right? We can't do all these good works and do all these amazing things. And then when something happens, when we get offended or when we don't feel like doing it anymore, we give up. Don't be like Jehu. We have to consider ourselves also. All right. Matthew uh, 6 and verse 24. Matthew 6 and verse 24. Joshua 24 and 15. And then we're done. All right. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Come on. No man can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. For neither will, for neither he will hate the one and love the other, mm -hmm. or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Right. You uh, cannot serve God and mammon. All right. You can't serve God and mammon, the idols of the heart, like uh, Ezekiel 14 and 3 says. If we have, don't get it, let's go to Joshua 24 and 15. We're wrapping it up. But if you have idols in your heart, you know it. Okay. 
You know when you're falling off. You know when you're falling short. And if you don't know, then listen to the counsel around you. You understand? Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. 15. Mm -hmm. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom, whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood mm -hmm. or the gods of the Amorites in whom land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's one thing that we always have to have stamped on our spirit. No matter what's going on, no matter what anybody says, no matter who fall out, no matter what. Okay. We can never get complacent to the point where we stop serving the Lord. Okay. We have to get that spirit of rejuvenation within us and we have to fight against ourselves. Okay. We have to win the battle against sin. This is, uh, this is, this was Jehu's battle. He didn't consider himself. All right. Uh, go to Zondervan Bible Dictionary, page 190, and read. No, I mean, um, the who's who. We'll finish off with this. Page 190, number four on Jehu. Page 190 about Jehu. So we read about Jehu. We read about his amazing works. We read about his accolades. We read about the great and amazing things that he did without fear. Then he went back and did the same thing that he was judging other people for. Mm that he was killing other people for. Don't let that be you, all right? So this is uh, Jehu, 10th king of Israel after the monarchy split. He reigned 841 to 14 BC. Uh, king Jeroham, the son of Ahab, was engaged in the defense of Ramoth Gilead in the mountains east of the Jordan River against the forces of Aram, Damascus, which is Syria. He handed over the, commanded, uh, over the command of the front to his general Jehu and went back to his winter palace to Jezreel to recover from the campaign's wounds. Here he was joined by his ally, King Ahaziah of Judah. And after that, we read it in the history. We read the valiant acts of Jehu. And we also read how he did not consider himself also. So this is who's who. Jehu, consider thyself also. Now you see it. Now you believe it. I hope you learned something, Israel. Most high in Christ, bless. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.